Hi guys, welcome back to our Exit Automation Reporting Systems and Exit Automation Test Harness System course. And in this new section, we'll be talking about building Exit Automation Reporting Web Services, which is built on the top of WCF. So in this video, we will be talking about the introduction of building EA Reporting Web Services. So as you can see, right now we have a new logo, which is kind of this, the black color. It's actually a service, a web service. So we're going to build this. Once again, you can see that PowerShell and Pickle is kind of disabled. And the reason is because we will not be discussing about these two technologies in this section. All right, so let's get started. Why WCF Web Services suddenly? What are we going to do with a WCF Web Services, first of all? Well, WCF Web Services is a framework for building service-oriented application. Using WCF, you can send data as a asynchronous message from one service endpoint to another. A service endpoint can be a part of continuously available service hosted by Internet Information Server, or it can be a service hosted in an application. An endpoint can be a client of a service that requests the data from a service endpoint. So that's the theoretical definition of what WCF is all about. So it is going to be a framework for building service oriented application. And that's what we'll be doing in our course this time. So we are going to make use of our WCF to make a N tier architecture. So before going to the N tier architecture, let's first discuss what is this three tier architecture we have existingly in our Exit Automation Reporting System UI as well as with the help of Exit Automation Reporting Server database. So we have something like this. We have a client or the Exit Automation Framework or a custom framework to consume the Exit Automation Reporting Database where you will be inserting a data into the Exit Automation Reporting Database and the same data you will be looking using Exit Automation Reporting System UI. So as of now, we have not used any client. Rather, we directly inserted it, the data into the SQL Server Management Studio and the data was inserted into the database and we saw the report from the Exit Automation Reporting System UI. That's what we did. And instead of inserting the data from the SQL Server Management Studio, you can also insert the data via Exit Automation Framework or with the custom framework. But we have not discussed any of that so far in this course. We will be doing it uh, in a few minutes. But this is kind of pain because you have to write your own custom code to insert the data into the Exit Automation Reporting System by either calling the stored procedures or the query to insert the data into the database. And then the data will be visible in our Exit Automation Reporting System UI. But what if this, if your company has so many people and there is so many changes happening into your reporting system UI and your DBA thinks that there is some logic to be changed in the data insertion part where they don't have to specify the machine name which is a parameter in our short procedure. Or if your database administrator thinks that he want to add two or three more fields, which is kind of mandatory, and it has to be changed across all the people who are using your Exit Automation reporting system. So while that's the case, then you also have to change the code in the client, which is nothing but your Exit Automation framework and in your custom framework. But instead of doing the whole logic change in your client directly, you can make it as a service or otherwise called as an entire architecture, something like this, where you will have a Exit Automation WCF web service hosted in the middle of your Exit Automation reporting system and Exit Automation database, where you can see that this particular web service will act as a contract between your actual implementation to the caller or nothing but the client. So now if there is any change happening, the whole change is going to be happened in the web service itself directly. So if it's going to happen, then your code or the client will be intimated instantly that there is a change in the implementation. So the people or the client which is consuming this particular web service, if you refresh the web service references, it will tell you that there is some change in the implementation and you have to make the change as defined by your DBA or by your Exit Automation Reporting System team. So right now, to be more clear and precise, this is the thing. With your existing three-tier architecture, 
Any change happening in the Exit Automation Reporting System or Exit Automation Reporting System database will not be notified to the client automatically. You as a client have to be notified by yourself. You have to either go to the database and verify what is the change or you have to check with, with your team of the changes. But if you write as a Exit Automation Web Service, then any change happen will be reflected in the Exit Automation Web Service as well. And the consuming client, it can be a Exit Automation Framework or a custom framework, will also be automatically notified if you refresh the web service reference in your project. So we will be using our Exit Automation Web Service to perform the operation. And what are the other kind of advantages that the Exit Automation Web Service has compared to your existing directly writing the code? Very, very simple. The main advantage is you don't have to write even a single line of actual implementation of code of how the data has to be inserted into the database. You just have to consume the Azure Automation Web Service into your project and pass the parameter as you do for your stored procedure query as a parameter and then the rest will be taken care of by your Exit Automation Web Service. So let's get started then and understand what I really mean in this presentation. So until last section, we were creating our Exit Automation Reporting System UI and the database for consuming the data from the database and showing it into the Exit Automation Reporting System UI, which was pretty cool. But right now, what if I want to insert these data from a Exit Automation Framework or any custom framework or any client into our Exit Automation Reporting System UI and the database? So how to do that? And that's why we're going to make use of our WCF client, right? So how to perform that kind of operation? It's very, very simple. All we're going to do is we are going to create a small web service for our existing ERS project here. And then we will make use of our existing code, which we already discussed in our previous sections video, and then perform a data insertion via a client. So let's quickly first create a WCF web service into our project and then talk the rest in a detailed way. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to create a new project by right clicking the solution, go to add new project. And this time I'm going to choose a web service. So that you can do by going to the Visual C Sharp and here you can search for something like WCF. You can see there are different kinds of projects available like WCF library, WCF library for VB, WCF service application, WCF workflow service applications and so many things. But the one which we are interested in is this, the WCF service application. So this is a project for creating WCF service application that is hosted in IIS or VAS. So I'm going to choose this guy and let's give a good name for this project so that we can make use of it very clearly. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give a name like EARS underscore service. And this is going to be created under our AIRS project folder itself. So I'm just going to hit OK. So as you can see, it is going to create as a very, very simple folder structure with a app data, iservice1.cs, service1.svc and a web.config file, just three files. And these files are kind of very, very important. So to make it more clear, let's close all the documents which we have already opened and let's open just the service1.cs. And you can see that there is a service contract with interface of service one and there is an operation contracts and there is a uh, method name which is kind of an inter since it's an interface you know that there is no real implementation is going to happen it's just a declaration of that particular method and this get data method should be available in your service one.svc if you just double click that you can see that this interface is being implemented right here but as you can see that we're not going to make use of this get data or get using data contract anywhere in our project. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete all these guys completely to make it more clearer to understand instead of just writing so many code. And even this one, I'm very much not interested in. So I'm just going to delete these guys as well. And also let's remove this cluttering comments. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a very, very small, uh, operation contract here. So let's give a name here, maybe iService services, and then I'm just going to save it. 
And in the operation contract, what I'm going to do, I'm, create, I'm going to create two operation contract methods here. And that's what is the power of our WCF. So you can create any kind of methods here which your client is going to consume. Your client is nothing but your Exit Automation Framework or your custom framework that you're going to build in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a very, very super simple method, something like create test cycle. Remember these two uh, stored procedures that we executed, the create test cycle and write test result method? The same stored procedures I'm going to call via C sharp using these two methods. So I'm just going to create a method, something like uh, create a cycle with a parameter of string application under test, string executed by, string requested by, string fill number, string app version, and machine name. Right? That's it. So since it is an interface, there won't be any kind of uh, real implementation of the methods. So I'm going to create one more operation contract here and I'm going to name this guy as write test result. This particular stored procedure, the SP underscore insert result. Remember we were creating the test cycle using these parameters and then we were also inserting the result using this particular stored procedure using SP underscore insert result. So we, all we require is this, the feature name, the scenario name, the step name, exception if any, and the result, which is which can be a pass result or a fail result, right? So I'm just gonna write the same thing right here. So string, feature, feature name, scenario name, step name, exception, and result. That's it. So these are the two methods that I'm gonna write for my I services interface, right? And let's go back to our service1.svc. So since we have changed the name of our interface, let's change the file name as well. All right. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove all these comments because it's really not going to make any sense here. So I'm just going to remove all of them. Let's give this a correct name. It is going to be I services interface. And you can see that these methods are completely obsolete. So I'm going to remove them because they don't exist. And it will tell you an error saying the methods is not implemented by this particular interface class. So I'm just going to implement all the interface. So you can see that it is automatically creating the structure for me, which is cool, right? Visual Studio is so intelligent. And then let's give a comment for this particular class. It's a main service class, which is consumed by the EA framework or any custom framework, right? This is the class which you're going to consume in your Excel automation framework on any custom framework while you work with insertion of data into the database. There we go. And here the create a cycle method. So what is the actual implementation that we're going to do? So, but what I'm going to do before actually inserting a data into the database, remember in our Excel automation reporting system, we did something like opening a connectivity and then closing the connectivity once it is done you can see that we we said like this connect reporting server and we wrote these two lines of code you remember that that's exactly what we're going to do in this particular project as well we need to connect to our reporting server reporting server database so for doing that what i'm going to do i'm just going to steal some of the code from here putting here as a constructor something like this and you can see that we'll get an exception. The reason is because the settings will not be available in our air service. I need to add a reference for my airs project. So I'm just going to add that and I'm going to hit OK. So now you can see that I have the reference to my airs project and the settings will be now available using airs.utilities namespace. So I'm just going to add them. There we go. Super cool. And let's add the system.configuration namespace as well. So I guess this is enough for the for the configurations and everything. And the final thing we need to do is to add some of the codes for this particular create a cycle method as well as for the write test result method. So if we add these two methods implementation, then we are pretty much good to go for calling these two methods in our client.